What's going on, Guna Nation? Good to see you guys back, and thanks for everybody who took part in the England versus Ukraine stream on Saturday. We had so much fun in that, and um, we're going to do it again. We're going to do both semi-finals, Italy and Spain tomorrow, and then we're going to cover the England-Denmark game. So just wanted to big up and thanks to all of you lot who participated in that. It was so much fun. Even now, I'm still laughing. I'm still cracking up on the amount of jokes that we have, and we like to have fun on the stream. That's what we're all about. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It helps to support the channel moving forward. Just want to catch up with you guys in Arsenal. I hadn't spoken to you a few days ago. I, I did report that the Ben White deal had been sorted out. All three parties have agreed uh, initially that the deal was going to go through and Arsenal have agreed to the 50 million with the add-ons, which is what they were looking for. As you guys know, Everton came in on the last minute, but really that was only to kind of shove the amount that Arsenal had to pay over the hill. As we know, the player has committed himself to wanting to move to Arsenal. Brighton have now agreed to do the sale and Arsenal have agreed to give him the money. So this is probably going to be announced sometime next week after the Euros have finished. Another deal which you guys already know about, which I put out on my last video, is Nuno Torres. Nuno Torres, the, the deal, again, everything has been accepted there. There was a late deal, an offer from Real Sociedad. They actually offered him more money in terms of personal terms. But he wanted to come to Arsenal because that's where he felt like he could develop more. So that one, now we're just waiting for, I believe it's incentives driven now. They're just waiting for the little small details to be sorted out. But that is going to be announced uh, probably sometime this, this week, I hope. Uh, outside of that, guys, it's sad to say that Matteo Guendouzi has, has said his goodbyes to Arsenal on social media. And look... For me, he was always Arsenal's most talented midfielder when he was here. He was under Emery, our best midfielder, and there wasn't even no competition. 22 years old, got into the national French team, was applauded by all the managers in Europe, said to be one of the best uncupping talents. At that time, he was valued, I believe it was about 45 million he was valued. And we're getting 10 million for him. I mean, 10 million? That's ridiculous. I can't even... I'm not even going to try and quantify that. If you were to go and buy a midfielder in England in his early 20s, in the Premiership, how much do you think that you'd be paying for him? Come on. Look around the league if they were playing for a top six side. Man City or Liverpool or Chelsea. Anywhere on that scale. 10 million. Look, I guess Arsenal just wants to get all the dealings that they had with him out of the window. There was a couple of people on the 101 forum that were talking about the reasons why. But, you know, I can't confirm them. I, I heard there was just badness going on between them and Mateo War at Arteta. I believe it was, was it Ars Blog or some, something like that had reported it. Could be another one. It could be another Arsenal website. I'm not sure which one it was. But they had reported that there were some other dealings in terms of him having a go at other opposing players about the lack of money that they earned in comparison to what the Arsenal players were earning. I mean, that st stuff kind of kind of goes around and has been going around for quite a while. You know, whether it happened or whether it didn't, we, c we can't confirm that. And whatever did happen, it doesn't really matter. What matters was that there was supposed to be a meeting and an apology and everything else that was going on with that Brighton game. And it didn't happen. And it didn't happen because it's clear that Mateo felt that he did the right thing in sticking up for his teammate. I see it happen every week in, in basketball, in American football. When someone attacks your player and harms them, you stick up for your player. Yeah, there's been players been ejected. There's been players that have been red carded and, and whatnot. But again, this goes... To, to show that it's down to poor officiating. If the officials don't step in and do their jobs, then the players stick up. Look, I know it's wrong, but at the same time, if an offensive lineman sees his quarterback getting beaten up and abused, you're not going to sit there and take it. Yeah, What kind of man are you if you're going to sit there and see your player getting slapped around and abused? So I think Mateo acted out in the way that all the other Arsenal players wanted to act out. Yeah, Let's not forget, when we saw the 
Arsenal versus Man United game, remember when they tried to stop our and beat and run and it ended up with nil-nil and Van Nistelrooy missed the penalty and Martin Keown and Ray Parler and all in that lot was all ballsy around him with his elbow. And really, that would be a red card. If that was today, that VAR would have red carded Keown. And none of you lot complained about it. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can't have it one way and not the other. And for me, he was sticking up for his teammate. He felt he was doing the right thing. And Arteta didn't see it like that. And the player didn't see it like that. So the re the relationship has never been repaired. So that's where it is on, on that respect, guys. Alexandre Lacazette, we're hearing now that he could be offered the one-year extension. I tell you what I think about that. I think that's a very smart way to do things. I think that's a very, very good way of ensuring that he sticks around for another year and you don't lose him the next year for free. He's still not the answer, guys, but he's the best option that we've got in regards to learning now how to play behind those young players. But Lacazette has taken a stance where he's sat back a little bit. He's learned to hold the ball in space and to deliver, play a cohesive game around all the young players. Saka, Smithrow, Pepe, Martinelli. Lacazette looks more relaxed at doing that. And Aubameyang doesn't. So at this point, I think you do keep him around for another year. But if you can't get that deal, then you'll have to pull the trigger and get what you can for him and use the money to rebuild. This season is all about letting players go, then rebuilding and bringing players in that fits your system. And the board has to back them as well. We've got to enact this plan. We've got to get it done. We've got to keep moving players on and bringing young players in. And we are seeing an abundance of young players in as well. But it looks more and more and more likely, even though Bert Leno was leaving messages saying we're going to have to wait to see what the summer brings. And I think right now you've got to look at it and think, well, he's probably going to stay until his last year. The perfect scenario would be that Onana stays where he is at Ajax for another year, leaves next year on a free and goes to Arsenal. And then they can let Bert Leno go because you're not going to really lose anything. Yes, he's down to his one year. But you've moved him on. You didn't pay anything for Leno anyway. You pay 18 million euros for him. So it's not like you went and broke the bank for Bert Leno. You didn't, yeah? Because he wasn't of that quality. He wasn't up there with the Allisons. He wasn't a 70, 60 million pound goalkeeper. So if you sell him for 25 million, you've done its job done, hasn't it? Yeah, if you get rid of Leno for that amount of money, for 25, 30 million, it's job done. And then you can move on and then go in and invest in Onana. But at the moment, I can't really see that goalkeeper position developing in the way that the team wants it to develop. I'm not a fan of Ramsdale at all. At all. Like, I don't even want to look at that as an option. I ain't sold on that at all. So it's up to you, Edu, in terms of what you're going to do to bring in someone who's competent. Yeah, and I'm not talking about Alex Runinson. Some Arsenal fans can't even remember the man's name. That's how insignificant Alex Runison is. Some people don't even remember his name. So there's still a lot of work to be done, guys. But I expect now with the end of the Euros closing and the Olympics sort of opening up, that you are going to see a wave of players that are going to be moved out and brought in now. Teams can now start to get ready for pre-season. And on the Arsenal players are supposed to be reporting next week, the ones that didn't have international duty. So it would be really good to, to bring those players in and see what they've got and see where they are. And the likes of Smith Rowe and Thomas Party to come in and start to get their fitness levels up because we, we, they need a preseason so badly, these guys. Fitness training, stamina training, strength training, all that thing has to work out. And But I did tell you guys and warn you about William Saliba. We're back to that again because I told you so. I've been telling you for a year ago, he ain't going to play for Arsenal. But, yeah, there is some light at the end of the tunnel because his agent hasn't closed the door on it. He's just saying, look, if you're saying he ain't ready for the Premiership, then we need to go to a team. Because the team he went to last year, was that really... Did you learn anything from last season? He played well for them, but that ain't Premiership level. So did you learn anything from him? And this is what sort of frustrates me. So he's going to Marseille now. Yeah, same place as Gwendozi. And he's going to try and see if he can fit in there and get some much-needed experience. But why haven't you sent him off to teams in the Premiership? Why hasn't he gone to uh, a Wolves? Why hasn't he gone to a Burnley? Why hasn't he gone to a Brighton? Why don't you make that part of the Ben White deal? You give us Ben White, we loan you Saliba for a year. 
I don't understand it. If you're saying he hasn't got the ability to play in the, the Premier League, send him to a team in the Premier League. It's a no-brainer. The more you send him out to these teams in Europe, especially the Dega Dega Leagues, you're not learning nothing. So after three years, you ain't going to be learning nothing about the player. How has this not been done? See, I don't have a problem with what's been happening with the player, but I have a problem with the process. So, because if you're not doing these things, how are you going to find the answers to your questions? We know Joe Willett can get it done. Why? And he's doing it against big teams. Man City, Liverpool. So if you're not doing that to the players you're trying to develop, that doesn't really say much to me. For me, in another year's time, I would not be surprised if William Saliba just says, okay, I like it here at Marseille, let's get a permanent deal done. And don't say I didn't warn you. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, guys, listen, that's it from me. I hope you guys have enjoyed the Euros. I'm going to catch up with you with the Italy-Spain game. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Peace, and I'm out of here.